Okay, it's a real pleasure for me to give this talk in this meeting in honor of Mustansil and Deepak. I've known both for many years. Uh, I first met uh, uh, Mustansil in seven, 1973 or 74. Uh, I was a postdoc at Brookhaven. Mustansil was a student and we were working with Marty Bloom then. Uh, uh, and then I met uh, Deepak only later, maybe in the, later in the 70s. And it was our ways crossed each you know, other many times during the years. In fact, during the years, I had uh, some seven postdocs coming from India. Um, and not surprisingly, all of them came from the group of Mustansil and, uh, and Deepak. Some of them, most of them were students or postdocs of Mustansil and Deepak. Two of them were kind of uh, scientific grandchildren of, uh, of the group. So it's really, it really was a pleasure over the years to work with them. Um, and uh, I want to wish both uh, many uh, healthy years and good spirit to come and many active years. Okay. Uh, to my scientific part, I want to talk about um, narrow channels, transport in narrow channels. And the work I'm going to describe was done with Asaf Miron, who was a PhD student and Harald Posh uh, from Vienna. Okay, what's the problem of uh, particles moving in a narrow channel um, is a classical problem which studied for many years. Um, if, if, if you have particles uh, such that they cannot cross each other in the channel, the channel is narrow enough, this is known as self -file, uh, self, uh, single file diffusion. And uh, if you took, take a particular particle and look at its fluctuations, you see that it's subdiffusive, and that's known as single file dynamics. Now, if you make the channel a little bit broader so that particles can cross each other, then immediately this, the, the dynamics becomes diffusive so that x squared goes like t rather than square root of t. So it's uh, no matter how small uh, uh, the probability of, of crossing each other, it becomes diffusive. Uh, now, one way of looking at it, a simple way of looking at it, is looking at a um, lattice model of particles. This is basically SEP, uh, simple exclusion process. Particles hop with the uh, uh, same rates right and left. Uh, and they, 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 there is exclusion, they cannot cross each other, and that's a single file dynamics that you see it here. On the other hand, when, if you want to simulate uh, the way they can uh, overtake each other, you can add an, a, a, a rate epsilon for which particles can exchange with other particles, with nearest neighbor particles. And when you add this epsilon, then immediately the dynamics becomes that of diffusive, so that for epsilon equal to zero, you get uh, square root behavior. For epsilon not equal to zero, it becomes diffusive. Uh, the next step is to look at the driven particle. So, so these special particles, the red one here, uh, while the rest of the particles are just diffusive, moving back, uh, right and left with the same rate, it move, this particle has, um, uh, is biased to move, say, more to the right with the weight p, to the, then to the left with the weight Q. And particles here still cannot cross each other. And then it turns out that it has a si si similar features to that thing of single file. Namely, that if you look at uh, delta X squared, the, the fluctuation of the uh, tagged particle of this tracer, it goes like square root of T. Also, if you look at the displacement, of these particles, since since it's pushed to the right, say if p is larger than q, it 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 has a displacement which goes like square root of t, meaning that it has a zero velocity. It's it's sub uh, linear. It's going like sub linear, and if you think about such a particle moving on a ring in a finite system, then in, in eventually it reaches a finite a velocity. But the velocity is very small, it's one over L. L is the system size. So when L goes to infinity, this velocity goes to zero. So that's for the background. What I want to consider is that what happens when, when the 
part, this um, dri um, driven tracer when it can overtake other particles. I want to add the probability, the possibility of this tracer to, uh, to exchange with other particles or to cause them. And the question is, what's going to happen when you add that? Is it going to immediately go to simple diffusive behavior or is it going to retain its, um, its features like a single fire thing? And from, from the case of non-driven particle, we naively, we would expect that the minute you allow this uh, tracer to exchange with the nearest neighbors, it will become diffusive. Okay, so that's that's the question, and uh, and um, and what we found is that it's rather surprisingly that this is not the case. Namely, okay, I, I'll just summarize the main results: is that you have. Uh, that when you add the probability of exchange with, with nearest neighbors, the single file dynamics is robust. That is, it still stay, uh, stays like um, a kind of um, uh, single file, even though there is um, exchange rates. Particles can take over. Then as you increase the, the, this exchange rate, uh, you encounter a phase transition and only then it becomes diffusive. So, so there is a full phase of, um, of um, uh, single file behavior. Uh, this transition is continuous. And the other thing is if you have more than one tracer, you have many tracers, it turns out they attract each other. Um, although there is no direct force between them, but through the fluid, uh, through the other particles around, they attract each other. And in fact, we, we managed to calculate the uh, potential, uh, the, inter the interaction potential, the effective potential attracting them, and it goes linearly with R. So it's a very strong attraction, okay? So let me just, just give you the results of the talk and give you some, some feeling how it, how it comes about. So suppose we take uh, the system for a particular choice of these rates, P, uh, Q, and P prime, and Q, Q, P prime and Q prime are the exchange rates, and P and Q are the hopping rate of the tracer. And if we do it at low density, at, at low density, the rho bar is 0.05, then what happens is that the particle moves with a finite velocity, and it, it generates a layer here, a layer of small layer, finite layer, of excess of density, and it just takes it around, it pushes it around, and uh, and it goes with finite velocity, and this kind is um, um, it's just a diffusive phase, simple diffusive phase with finite velocity. Um, and this density profile is localized; it just localized near the um, the tracer. Now you increase the density. When you increase the density the width, the thickness of this layer becomes broader and broader. And at some critical value, it becomes macroscopic. So, so, uh, so here what I plot at uh, the, the, the density profile at high density, 0.2 or 0.4, but I plot it as a function of L over L. So, so it's a scaled thing. It, it scales with the system size. The, the thickness of this layer scales with the system size. And, um, um, and, and you get more and more particles as you increase the density, more and more particles uh, accumulating there. And so that uh, is going to be the, uh, the, the velocity uh, in this phase goes to zero, basically, of, of the tracer, because it, it, it tries to push more and more particles as it moves, and uh, the velocity becomes zero. Uh, so we have uh, either... Um, um, kind of localized phase with the ordinary behavior. Here it's a, um, this, um, you know, more restricted behavior. If you plot the velocity as a function of density, you see that at low density, indeed, the velocity is finite, but then at some point, uh, the velocity becomes zero. Zero, uh, and, and that's how you get the transition from the localized phase to the um, to the extended, what we call the extended phase, which basically this one, this extended phase is the um, uh, single file kind of phase, while this one is the diffusive. 
Now, as you further increase the, the density, you get another transition, but this is just peculiarity of the model because we have a particle hole symmetry and then you accumulate holes rather than particles. And that's okay, but that's peculiarity of this particular model. Uh, here is the velocity as a function of one over L just to show that it goes like one over L in the, in the um, single file phase um, as we expect. In that. Professor Mukamel, you have two more yeah. minutes. Okay, so this is the phase diagram. Okay, there is an extended phase. This is the full phase diagram, extended phase and localized phases. And as you increase the density, you go through these two transitions I described. Uh, the density profile, the way you, we have, uh, you can calculate it. In fact, the density profile is just uh, very simply calculated. It's A plus B over E, it's exponential, E to the minus L. And the transition is, is manifest itself through the way uh, C, this, basically this parameter, goes uh, with L. It turns out that in the single file phase, the solution gives you uh, it's one over L, and that's how it's very broad uh, profile. And, um, and then in the localized phase, it's a number of order one, and the transition turns out to be of order one over square root of L. Okay, this is the diffusion constant. Okay, I want to say just a few, to, to finish with some few words about what's, what happens when you have more than one particle. Here you start with, with K4 uh, tracers and you plot their position as a function of time. So you start with some arbitrary positions and that you see as if time goes by, they just attract each other and they coalesce and they and then move together as a single thing. And the question is, uh, uh, what is the interaction that makes it so um, I think I will not have time to, to really discuss uh, about it, but we modeled this by looking at the two, two traces. We took two traces, for example, and we, um, you can look at the dynamics of these two traces by looking at the rates, uh, uh, what we call rate of moving outward, which I call plus, that is the move away, and the rate of moving inward. You can estimate these rates by knowing the, the density profiles outside this region where they are. You can estimate these rates. And eventually, you, we, we, we ended up calculating the distribution function of how many particles and how many holes you have in between these two pairs. So this is what we call P of N0, N1. And uh, so this is the probability distribution of having N zero holes and N one particles in between. And basically this is just a binomial distribution with some rates that we can calculate. And from this, you get the uh, distribution of the distance between them. And you see that the distribution, but by just summing up this uh, um, P, uh, keeping their sum, K is the distance N zero plus N one, you see that it's exponential. So the distribution of the distance between the two particles is exponential, meaning that there is actual uh, interaction which goes linear with K. Okay, uh, and this is basically the- So could you the, please wrap up a little bit quickly? Yes, I finished basically. Uh, this is the end of it. This is the uh, probability distribution and it goes um, exponential uh, as we expect here. Okay, so with that, I'll finish. Uh, thanks, Professor Mukamal, for a, an amazing talk. Uh, now the session is open for questions. Yeah, Rahul. Yeah, yeah uh, this attraction between tracers, is it present in all in both the phases or is it just present in the uh, macro, like macroscopic phase? It, it's, it, uh, it's present in both phases. Okay. Uh, so basically, if you want, there are two kinds of phase diagrams here. One is uh, whether it's a single file or non-single file or localized and extended. And the other one, whether they are attractive or not. And these are two different things. I mean, the attractive uh, domain um, has some overlap with both kinds of phases. Okay. Thank you. Tridi, please. Hi, David. So there's another... Um, like variation that you can do is that in when you have the driven tra tracer, there could be something analogous to that of the weakly asymmetric version, right? That 
there is a symmetric tracer and also something that could be how it weakly goes to the asymmetric. So right. would that also give a transition uh, in this behavior? Uh, because as you know, for the WASEP, there is a transition yeah. point, which- Yeah, yeah, that could be. So, so you want to, to, um, to, to model it with weight P and Q such that the difference is one, one over, over L. Yeah. And uh, then I want uh, to see how do you L. see there's, uh, a, there's a beta over L, which will- That could, could be, could be, I don't know. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Okay. I don't know. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thanks, Professor Mukamal, once again. Uh, if there are no more questions. There is one question from Shakuntala. Uh, okay. Yeah. Please. Hi, David. Hi. Hi. So uh, maybe you mentioned this, maybe I missed this part that when you talked about multiple tracers, this question is related to what Rahul asked that uh, you mentioned that each tracer gives rise to some density pattern which is localized. But then how do they feel the presence of each other that they, this long range attraction which is taking place between them? Um, they feel each other by, you, you have to look at these rates. Uh, you see, they, 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 move, they move together. So basically the density profile outside, you know, the pair to the right here is basically the density profile of a single tracer. So, so and they ba basically they become glued to each other, and this um, outward rates becomes somehow very small, while the inward rates becomes very large, and that's how they attract each other. So, when you look at the density profile I talked about, it's it's you look at it from the outside here and from the outside on the other side. And this would be that of a single, basically single tracer. And in between, they become glued to each other. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So that's what happens. Thank you. Yeah. So, can one say that the fluctuating hydrodynamics on the different tracer particles are correlated forces? Um, the flux, um, the, uh, what do you mean by? The because the forces. Forces. so there must be some correlation which pushes them together which means that the forces on the two particles are correlated uh, yes yes i would say yes yes okay i mean yes. it's it just not seen not treated this way most of the time yeah but that's how yeah so that's how it comes out yeah okay Okay, uh, I see no more raised hands. Um, so let's thank Professor Mukamil once again.